Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, Pet Parent. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited for today's interview because, y'all, I have... Destiny White. So Destiny is a professional pet sitter in Arizona, but she is also studying canine nutrition. She's about to graduate at the end of this year, 2022, when she will start offering meal formulation services first for dogs and then eventually for cats. I'm so, so excited if I haven't already said that because I feel like this is an area where we really need more people. We need more people like Destiny that are available that are helping people to formulate balanced diets for their pets because y'all, I mean, we need it. Anyway, I learned a lot on this podcast. I learned a lot with this interview with Destiny and I know you will too. So without any further ado, let's get into the interview. Perfect. Well, Destiny, thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So you were a pet sitter and you were studying canine nutrition. You're like literally about to graduate, which is so exciting. Yes. <laughs> um, um, I was hoping to have graduated by now, but some life stuff happened. So it kind of got pushed back, but I should definitely be graduated before the end of the year. Awesome. And it is like, so few people actually do this and go through it. Like it's, it's complex. It's complicated. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Um, but we're so fortunate to have people like you who care enough to learn and study because it is complex, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what exactly, or maybe it was a bunch of things made you decide to like study it and like learn it and get certified and all the things. Um, so I probably really started getting an interest in nutrition about five years ago. Um, when my oldest dog gypsy, um, started going blind and I later on, like we did like DNA tests and breed specific tests. And we found out that it was nutrition related and yeah. (laughs) So, um, that is kind of what made me like, really like start diving into like, what is actually in the bowl? (laughs) Um, and then, you know, I just started formulating for my own dogs and I saw the benefit of it. And then I'd help, you know, friends and family. And I'm just like, you know what, like, maybe this is what I want to do. I'm already a pet sitter. I'm already in the pet space. Maybe I can also become a nutritionist and then kind of merge the two together. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. Um, but I found that I, I know more than the average person. So like in my dog training, I never go into a client's home anymore and not talk about it. It's one of the first things we talk about. And yeah. even like with, uh, compared to you, my, my very, very small amount of knowledge, I see huge changes in these dogs mm-hmm. because, and it's because, you know, we're fortunate enough to have some really good companies out there making you know, frozen raw and and things like that. But, um, combining it with your pet setting, I can totally see like how that's just going to explode for you. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, even now, like I have so many clients where, you know, I go over there to like do a meet and greet and the dog is just like itching like crazy, or it's got yeasty skin or yeasty ears. And I kind of, you know, I don't overstep because they're there for just me to pet sit. But I do kind of, you know, make little comments like, you know, oh, what are you feeding it? You know, maybe a switch to this would help alleviate this problem. And I have had people come back and they're like, you know what? I did take your advice and I've already noticed improvements, even if it's still to a processed food, but a better one. Yeah, I know. I see that all the time, too. And what what I've noticed is that people hire me because they, they have a behavioral issue, right. Or they have a puppy that are like, ah, I need to figure out all the training stuff. 
And I talked to them about nutrition. They're like, oh my gosh, yes. Tell me more. Like, I want to know all the things and I want to feed my pet the best thing I can possibly feed. And, um, I have probably only once that I can think of in the recent, um, past, like hit, like hit a wall with somebody where they were like, I don't think I can do that. And it was because she was a vegetarian and she was grossed out. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, take your time. I understand. I was a vegetarian for a long time too. And (laughs) I started raw feeding my dogs when I was still a vegetarian. I get it. Like, you know, um, I'm not a vegetarian anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, you know, you learn so much about yourself, right. When you're learning about your pets. Um, yeah, so that's going to be like really awesome. And I am, I'm, I'm, I'm both like really sad to hear that Gypsy's eyesight is due to nutrition, but also like grateful because it led you down this path, right? Like I firmly believe that our pets, every one of them are brought into our lives for a reason. Yeah. And maybe that was the reason, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm glad that when she got the diagnosis, you know, cause they gave me like the OcuBlow prescription, like pills for dogs eyesight. And I mean, she was only like four and a half, five. And her vet literally told me like, she's going to be blind by like seven or eight because it started so young. And I'm glad that I didn't just take it and be like, okay, this is what it is. And that I started, why is she going blind? <laughs> Because ever since then, and I've started adding things and making sure that there are specific things in her diet. It's been five years now since her diagnosis and her eyes have not progressed at all. And her vet is like completely like stumped. Like she doesn't understand. (laughs) Yeah. That's incredible though. I mean, the power of nutrition, I mean, it, it, it fuel, like we don't, I think as a society, we don't see quite how like food is fuel for our bodies Mm -hmm. and what we put into our body matters. Like we've become so accustomed to running through a drive-thru and just getting something to eat or eating for pleasure. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we do. That's not what our dogs do or what our dogs would do if we, if they weren't in our house sitting on the couch next to us. Right. (laughs) Um, It's not for pleasure. Yeah. It's, it's for fuel. And I think there's a, a, even with a, even with our dogs, I think there's, there's like a fine line because we want to, it's like at night, my dog, she gets a treat for, it's like our routine, right? I go with the cats and because my cats have their separate room in the house and she goes and she knows, she knows the word we go check on the cats and then she goes and like walks around and does her thing. She comes back in to my husband and gets her treat for like her nighttime treat, her bedtime treat. And it's like important to him that it's something yummy and tasty. So it's normally like a leftover from us. So like I eat a lot of steak, so it's probably a filet or it could be a <laughs> rib or like, you know, it's something really <laughs> yummy and tasty, but at the same time, and yes, it's cooked, but like at the same time, it's not something horrible for her, like ice cream or potato chip. <laughs> right. <laughs> French fries or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, there's that fine line of like making sure or, or like, really it's for us. We're mm-hmm. getting that. I'm giving you something super delicious yeah. and yummy. Right. <laughs> um, but at the same time, she's getting meat, she's getting protein. She's getting, you know, so anyway, that's my little rant on that. <laughs> I know I'm so bad at that. Um, when I lived with my family a while ago, Gypsy got very overweight because everybody loves to give Gypsy treats. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like if we're giving her treats, it has to be like a carrot or something because <laughs> we got to get this weight off of her. Yeah. And then you would like, like in the mornings I would feed them. And then if I would like leave and go about my day, <laughs> my mom would get up and Gypsy would act like she didn't eat breakfast. And then my mom would feed her a second breakfast. I'm like, y'all do not fall for it. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I know it's, um, I I have more questions for you, but I'm just having so much fun talking. It is really interesting to me just how much we can affect ourselves, our dogs, our cats with nutrition. And it just reminded me, I used to feed my dog 
a raw food that was fermented that we're not going to say the name of that when I found out something was happening with the company, I said, no, nope, we're switching. Right. Cause I didn't know it was the unknown that scared me. And, um, we switched to, and I, I was doing a rotation of three different brands of food when we switched and she just got the net, one of her ears was red and itchy. And I could not figure out what was like at first I didn't realize, like, I didn't correlate like, oh, we just switched foods. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went, we went to the vet and the vet's like, there's nothing wrong. Like I see it's red and itchy, but like, I don't see anything in there. There's nothing that's telling me there's anything wrong other than it's red and itchy. Right. So I did a bunch of research and I did a bunch of research and I'm like, I don't want to put her on medication for no reason. Right. The, The vet's saying there's, she can't find any reason for this. I went and I researched and researched and I decided we're going to try raw goat's milk. Mm -hmm. So now she gets raw goat's milk for her breakfast. We've been doing this for a few years, two or three years now. Um, I don't remember the exact timeline, but she gets raw goat's milk for breakfast and then she gets her raw food for dinner. And I mean, within like two days, her ear cleared up when I added in the raw goat's milk. And I was like, wow. So now we're like, okay, we're not going without the raw goat's milk. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. Like, that's crazy. Just two days. It was almost instantaneous. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I was expecting it to at least take some time or not even work. Right. Like, oh, (laughs) maybe my vet missed something. (laughs) Um, But I think just, yeah, her body got so used to that really high quality fermented food. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't have fermented food. Yeah. And, you know, I think that was a big difference for her. Um, so it's just amazing to me, like what food can do to our bodies. Well, and even like with that, um, I also had fed that same company a while back and, you know, everybody was like, oh my God, I love this food. It's done, you know, all these wonders for my dogs. I'm like, yeah, like, let me buy it. Like I bought like three months supply and every single one of my animals, except for the cat did awful on the fermented food. Really? Yeah. And so it's just crazy that like, some dogs that high histamine with the fermentation, their body is just like, absolutely not. Like they didn't have like, they weren't itchy or whatever, but like, they just had a lot of upset stomach and like, they just weren't feeling good. Mm -hmm. Um, gypsy who is like, so food motivated. Like if she doesn't want to eat, we need to go to the vet. (laughs) And she was starting to turn her nose up at her food. Um, And I'm like, okay, like this isn't working. So I ended up just giving all of it to the cat. But yeah, it's crazy. Like it's such a good thing, the fermentation and all the probiotics, but not every dog is going to do good with it. And like, I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't want to see and they'll keep their dog on something because it's, you know, quote unquote good, Mm -hmm. but it's not fit for them specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I think that probably like kind of segues into the next question is that what is something you have learned in studying canine nutrition that you were like the most surprised about? You were like, Oh my gosh, wow. Really? (laughs) Um, you know, that one is such a tough one because I feel like, like little small things that I learned. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like (laughs) that's crazy. How did I not know that? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I feel like it's probably a toss up on either just how like a standard, like prey model raw diet is deficient in a lot of things where like, that's what we're told is like the best thing to feed. Cause that's what wolves eat. Yeah. Um, so either a toss up between that or the pork liver. I think that one probably really like surprised me when I learned that there's like no bioavailable copper. And so like, it's totally fine to feed, but just know like, you're not going to get any copper from it. And then like, I sat there and thought like of all the times I've fed, like an all pork diet. And I'm just like, Oh my God, my poor dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it is really interesting. And I, um, I remember seeing, gosh, it was years ago and I don't even remember who put it out. It I probably, probably Dr. Karen Becker. Right. Cause like she puts everything out, um, <laughs> but it was like a picture of two ducks and like the nutritional value of a duck 
even a hundred years ago versus the nutritional value of a duck today. Right. And we have to realize that they're different Mm -hmm. because humans have gone in and we've, we've changed so much. We've changed the environment. We've changed how we breed animals for slaughter. We've, we've changed so much that the nutritional value of animals has changed over the years. So when we think, right? Like, well, a wolf in the wild is fine. And they're eating X, Y, Z. Well, they're eating that wild animal that is untouched by humans Yeah, more than likely, almost definitely has a very different nutritional value from that same animal that you're buying from the butcher or the grocery store, whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. because it's just so vastly different. And that's exactly to your point, like why that barf model is just more than likely, if you're not doing extra research and extra homework, you're you're deficient in some areas and not knowing it. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, even just what the animals that we're feeding our animals are fed, you know, gypsy doesn't really do well on chicken, but if I get it from like a local farm where they're out on pasture eating bugs and they're not just fed a bunch of corn, Mm -hmm. she does fine. Yeah. And so it's just like, even those things, and that's also going to change the nutrition profile of that chicken. You know, mm-hmm. is it going to be higher in omega sixes, lower, you know, higher in omega threes if it's outside and it's not just eating a bunch of GMO corn? <laughs> right. Because GMO matters so mm-hmm. much in nutritional value. And my mom, my mom was just here visiting and she has been dealing with for uh, years now. She quote unquote can't eat gluten. She's not, she doesn't have celiacs, right. But she can't eat gluten. And I'm like, it's not that you can't eat gluten. It's that you can't eat glyphosate anymore. Right. right? Like you can't, you can't eat the chemicals that are put on the crops. So like trying to adjust her mindset of like, Oh, gluten is bad. Right. Mm, I mean, we we probably shouldn't be eating as much as we're eating, but (laughs) it's really like the chemicals that are put on. And, and so when these chickens are being, you know, fed corn, of course, like they're not going to be as healthy. They're going to be adulterated. Is that the word for it? (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, even like I mean, I've heard of the cows on factory farms being just sprayed with glyphosate because they're spraying all of the fields and the cows are right there. And it's just like, that's awful. Like not just for our animals, but like to think that like, we're also eating that, like, what is that doing to us? And on top of obviously eating fast food and junk food and us being overweight, that's contributing to health issues. But it's like, it's also what our food is being sprayed with and being injected with. Like it's ridiculous. Well, yeah. And then the, um, of course I I did a whole, I think, I think it was a podcast. It might've been a a YouTube on glyphosate. And it was just, I actually recently learned that it's an, um, antibiotic. I was like, Oh, I didn't know that. Like, that's one of the reasons that it's so effective. So like we're, spraying all of our fields and everything. So we're also destroying the dirt and the minerals and the vitamins in the dirt because we're putting so much antibiotic in the soil. Wow, <laughs> and crazy. Yeah, it's, it is crazy. I think I, I think I was reading one of Dr. Becker's articles and I, I was like, oh my gosh, really? Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that kind of, we've, we've kind of talked about it already, but my next question for you was, that I get, I get a lot of people asking me when they have a a recipe. So like that famous recipe that Dr. Becker put out years ago for a balanced raw dog food, people are constantly like, oh, well, my dog won't eat X, like sardines or whatever. What can I replace it with? Well, that's not, that may be a simple question for you to ask, but there's not not an easy answer for that. Right. Because tell me. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I see that a lot too. And unfortunately I also see a lot of people are like, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Swap it out. And it's like, no, (laughs) um, you know, every, every cut of meat, every organ, they're going to have different nutrient profiles. And so if you take out, like, let's say, I think if the same recipe that you're talking about is the same one I'm thinking of, I think it was like the main uh, ingredient was beef. Mm -hmm. 
which is already going to have more zinc than like chicken. So if you're like, oh, my dog doesn't eat beef or it's too expensive, let me just swap it out with chicken. Well, now that recipe's got way less zinc in it than it had when it was formulated. So those little things, you know, for an adult dog that's healthy, that's balancing over time, you know, if you needed to get like chicken hearts at the store and they were out and so, but they had turkey hearts. Well, you can probably substitute them. They're probably close nutritionally. Substitute them for a week until they come back in the store. That's fine. Yeah. But for like a puppy, mm, I would go back to whoever formulated the recipe and be like, what can I swap this out for? Um, you know, like I think lamb heart and pork heart are pretty similar. Like I feel I would probably feel okay with like swapping those in a recipe. Um, maybe like something, you know, and that's the other thing too, is there's not a lot of data on some meats. Mm. So like I use a lot of rabbit because it's a cooling protein. Gypsy does really well on it. And so there's not a lot of data on rabbit for like parts and stuff. So mm. my best educated guess would be to use the data that we have on chicken hearts. It's not going to be perfect, but it's all that we have. And that's kind of where like the gray zone comes into it. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with like wild game. There's not a lot of information on what's actually included in it, but we shouldn't not feed it. Yeah. You know? So like when I get like venison, I'll just plug in like a really, really, really lean cut of beef and go from there. And it might not be perfect, but it's better than nothing. And it's better than going in completely blind to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily think that people need to go out and buy a formulation software or anything like that. But I mean, even just going on the USDA food database, you can do a quick little search and just kind of compare and see like, you know, oh, these both have similar profiles. They can easily be swapped out. Yeah, no, that is really good information. And I think I honestly appreciate that people even ask because if you're, if somebody out there is not asking, then they're probably just winging it. Right. (laughs) So even if you ask and you get 10 different answers from people, right? Like you're, you can at least realize that, oh, this isn't as simple as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And like, take a step back. And I tend to send people, I'm like, look, this, this recipe was formulated by Dr. Becker go to X, Y, Z, like plant. The easiest thing you can do is go to plant a pause, right. And get other recipes there that are going to best meet with what your dog will eat. Um, and then of course there are other formulators that, that I like to refer people to, but, um, that's, that's a bigger expense that people have to be prepared for. Right. (laughs) No, definitely. And I mean, I've seen some of them where they're decently affordable. And then I mean, I was just looking at somebody the other day and it was like $500 a session. And I'm like, who's paying that? Like, I totally understand that your business is worth it, but like, oh my goodness, like that is kind of out of bounds on what most people are going to be able to do. And even follow-up sessions were only $50 cheaper. Wow. I mean, I really, first of all, I really appreciate, and I hope that they're getting that because I don't know about you, but I find in the pet space specifically that people are very like, they think everything should be free. (laughs) So like the more people are like our time, your time is valuable. My time is valuable, right? Like even if I'm just giving you information and not necessarily instruction, like Mm -hmm. my time is valuable, but anyway, Um, that's a tangent. <laughs> so I kind of hope they're getting that because it's going to help others like increase the bar yeah. or like guys, my time and my information, like, like what you're doing, going through school, that's very valuable, mm-hmm. right? So price it accordingly. <laughs> yeah, no, I've definitely seen people where it's like, they're charging like 20 bucks and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> like that's too cheap. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're going to send me Dr. Becker's recipe with like your name on it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So you mentioned something about cooling foods and I definitely want to talk about that. But before we do two, two things that I think are like 
Well, there are a lot of very, very controversial things in (laughs) the pet world, Um, vegetables in general being one of them, but let's break that down. I think for some reason, eggs are kind of a little controversial and tomatoes also seem to be super controversial. Tell me what you think about this. Yeah. So with eggs, I think it's just, it goes back to that whole like biotin deficiency that we always hear about. And so then people are like freaking out. But the main thing, one, it's only if you're feeding egg whites, which I don't know anybody who's just giving their dog egg whites like yeah. that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and if people are really concerned, just cook it, mm-hmm. cook the egg. Um, I personally, I don't feed chicken eggs just because of gypsy's sensitivity. Um, but when I do feed like duck eggs, I like to hard boil them. And so that way I can break them up and like give a little bit to everybody just because all my animals are so small, (laughs) like one whole egg is ridiculous for them. Um, but the nutrition doesn't really change much. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you want to cook the egg, scramble it, poach it, whatever, like if that makes you feel better then do it, um, raw though, I mean, you know, like I said, it's just the egg whites that would cause an issue and just don't overdo it. You know, I see some people, you know, they'll be like, oh, my dog gets like 15 eggs a week. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Even when I had a great Dane, I think I only fed her like maybe three eggs, maybe four a week. Like that to me at that point, I'm really only feeding eggs for like the choline and the the, uh, folate. And three eggs is like a good chunk of her nutritional requirement. So like anything else than that, I feel like they're trying to give nutrients in like a cheap way. Yeah. But yes, an egg is great, but I don't necessarily agree with some of the comments out there that say like eggs are complete whole food. Because when you look at like what's actually in an egg versus like what our dog needs, like it's definitely lacking in some stuff. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I first started um, learning about raw food, I don't remember ever hearing that it was like a, a perfect meal or, mm-hmm. but I do remember like there was a lot of, it, it's like the perfect protein is what yeah. I remember reading and hearing. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the protein source you should be feeding. Your right. Dog, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I remember too. And, you know, they would be like, Oh, it's a great source of amino acids, which it is. And I think it went from like everybody saying it's a good source of protein to now it's like, Oh, well, it's a complete whole food because like it raises a, ba- it, you know, it turns into a baby chicken. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. <laughs> a little flawed, but okay. <laughs> right. There, there's some stages in there of development. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you know, if you forgot to like thaw out food or whatever, like sure. Crack an egg in the bowl, maybe add a sardine or something, a little goat milk and like your dog's going to be fine. But like, don't just rely on eggs to meet like a good chunk of your calories. Gotcha. That's good. I appreciate that. So with tomatoes, I have been like this with tomatoes (laughs) Um, because when I first started feeding my dogs before I got to raw, I was doing like home cooked stuff Mm -hmm. and I was dabbling and I knew nothing and I had no like group Facebook group resources. And um, I was just kind of winging it. Like, this is what I think they should be eating. And then I'd be able to go to my vet and my vet would be like, well, maybe you should add some vegetables. And he specifically told me to add tomato. I was like, okay. So I did. And then I, the more I started learning, um, I was like, man, he didn't know anything. <laughs> right? but, I mean, that's, you know, anyway, um, a whole, whole other tangent, right. <laughs> but, um, I've kind of been like this with tomatoes because they do have nutritional value. Right. But at the same time, they're, if maybe I'm, I'm, you can correct me, they're in the nightshade family. Right. So like, we don't want to overfeed them. So like, where do you stand with tomatoes? Um, I personally don't feed them only because I don't like tomatoes. So like they're never (laughs) in the house. (laughs) Um, but I do feed, um, like, you know, like the tinned sardines in tomato sauce, not the hot yeah. ones, but the regular ones. Mm-hmm. I will add those in like a couple times a month. 
um, specifically mostly to Gypsy, just because they have a lot of lycopene, which is really good for her eyes. Um, and I haven't really noticed any upset, especially like with it being tinned and like the high sodium or whatever. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to feeding like fresh tomato. Um, the only thing that you really want to avoid is like, if it's green, like mm. don't feed it if it's green. Um, you know, don't feed them the leaves or the stems or anything. Um, but just like moderation, you know, don't like to yeah. start chucking tomatoes at your dog, <laughs> but it is in the nightshade family. And so, um, some dogs will have sensitivities if they have like arthritis or IBD that already produces a lot of inflammation. And so in those dogs, people might see that their dog has like an upset stomach, um, little lethargy, maybe drooling and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. If they're that sensitive. I haven't noticed that Gypsy does have um, some stomach issues that we're working on. And I don't feel like the tomatoes, the little bit that she gets affected. Awesome. Moderation seems to be like the theme, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's like what people forget. I mean, even with like supplements, like, yeah. they say, oh, so-and-so recommended this. And so like, they want to throw like the whole kitchen sink at their dog. And it's like, a little bit here, maybe this supplement one week, not the next week. Um, you know, I love all of the information that like Dr. Becker and Rodney put out and like the little infographics. It's like, oh, broccoli and blueberries and da da da. And then you read the comments and people like take it to the extreme where it's like they want to feed like all the broccoli and they want to feed yeah. 50 blueberries a day. And it's like, okay, people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my dog will not eat a blueberry. Really? Um, I know. I the the dogs we had previously, I would have to cut the blueberries in half. Oh. Like I'm like a tiny little knife with these tiny. Because I don't, I don't know if it was like the smell. Like I needed to open it up so they could smell that it was food. I don't know, but they would eat them if I would slice them in half. But my dog now just is like no blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know. My great Dane didn't like fresh ones, but she liked the frozen ones. Well, that's, I don't know that I've ever tried frozen. That's interesting. Yeah. I know they, they definitely, they smelt different to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm only assuming they would smell different to them. And I don't know, maybe it was because they were more crunchy where like a regular blueberry is like very squishy and just mm -hmm. squishy. <laughs> yeah, I did a, um, for her birthday last year, I did like a big board, like a self-selection board with all this different, all this different food on it. And, um, it was funny because she went through the whole thing, went through the whole board and there was like prime rib and different, <laughs> um, and then like the very, she reluctantly ate the scrambled egg like last. And then she left the blueberries and was like, nope, not even going back for that. <laughs> it was like, okay, fine. <laughs> that is so funny. See, I've tried to do self-selection boards for gypsy. I swear that dog would eat anything. Like <laughs> it's never fun because she just inhales everything. She doesn't take her time. And I'm just like, okay, well, that was a great two seconds. <laughs> yeah. No, my dog eats pretty quick too, but I just thought it would be something fun and different to do yeah. for her birthday. And it was, she of course went for the prime rib first, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just fun. Like seeing what they go to first and like mm -hmm. the, yeah, I, 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 I'm an, I'm a dog nerd, right? <laughs> it was fun. So people who are still feeding kibble and we look, I get it, right? Like, I don't know how many years my mom has been asking me what to feed her dogs and she's still feeding kibble. <laughs> but for people like that, what is your best advice to help them boost the nutrition their pets giving, getting? Um, Honestly, the first advice, go slow. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel overwhelmed by everything. Cause once you start digging, you know, like I said earlier, there's a thousand and one things that they tell you to add to the bowl. Please don't add it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the simplest thing is, you know, if you're cooking vegetables and you're chopping them up, give some to the dog, throw it in the bowl, give it to it as a treat. Um, I think eggs are a nice, easy, you know, everybody's got eggs usually. Just crack one open, put it in the bowl. I know when I was feeding kibble a long time ago, even I would add eggs that I knew like nothing about the whole like add fresh thing. I was just like, oh, let's add egg. Um, I know 
like kefir, yogurt. Um, I know some people add cottage cheese. That's probably not one of my ideal things, but at least it's something fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, fruits are really easy. Um, going back to like the blueberries, the frozen ones are nice because then you don't have to worry about them going bad if you're not feeding a lot of them and if you're not eating them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, even like just adding some sardines, coconut oil, you know, I think that just those small little changes and it doesn't have to be a lot, you know, mm -hmm. just you can either top it up with the food if you're adding like such a small amount that it's not right. really going to make a difference calorically. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just if they're getting three cups, give them two and a half cups that day and give them the rest in fresh food. Yeah. So tell me if, if I should not be saying this to people, a lot of times when I go in and people are feeding kibble, I tell them when you're cleaning your meat to cook dinner, whatever, like you're cleaning off, put that on top of it. And that generally is going to be fattier, but I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, it's a, it's a nice, healthier fat better than probably, I mean, what, you know, the oxidized fat that they're getting in their kibble. Right. right. So should I not be saying that? Is that too much fat? Do you think? Um, I think it depends on the cut and like exactly how much, like if they cut <laughs> off like half a pound of fat, like, yeah. Please, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then just also like, maybe just like a, almost like a pre-warning kind of thing. Like, you know, add a couple pieces at a time, maybe put the rest in a baggie and save it. Yeah. Cause I, mean, I know some dogs are, yeah, some dogs are just so sensitive. Um, my Dane being one of them, I remember she literally got a Teddy Graham cracker. You know how small those are. She had explosive diarrhea for three days from that little cracker. Oh, poor thing. I know. Oh. So, you know, I'm always like, I, whenever I tell people, like if they're going to add something that could possibly cause a little GI upset, like fat. Yeah. But like a little fingernail size. <laughs> <laughs> and then just again, like base it on how big the dog is. I've yeah. seen people give crazy size pieces to like their chihuahua. And I'm like, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> but yeah. I don't think, unless the dog has an underlying like GI issue or medical issue, I wouldn't think yeah. it would cause like pancreatitis because it's not right. cooked. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of my thought too. But yeah, I do, I do tend to like, I, I tell people like amount, amount. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's kind of like where my head first goes is like, well, if you're cooking meat for yourself, give some to your dog, right? Like you have extra, I mean, I yeah. know you have extra you're cleaning your meat, right? right. <laughs> but anyway, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. So you mentioned earlier a little bit about cooling foods, um, which I have a teeny, teeny little bit of knowledge about, but not a whole heck of a lot. And I know you have recently gotten more into it. So tell me yeah. about TC, is it TCM? I was going to say TCVM, but TCM is. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I probably really got into it a couple months ago. Um, I started seeing a new vet for gypsy back in September and we started doing acupuncture and stuff and you know, things were going great. And every time we went though, Gypsy just had a lot of like sensitivity in her stomach, which was odd to me because like at home, she doesn't vomit. She doesn't act like she's sick. Like she has like no symptoms of stomach issues. And so one of the things that her vet had said to me before was, you know, maybe start adding some cooling foods because she's also very hot. Mm -hmm. And so like her tongue is nice and purple and she's just constantly panting. Like I have my house at like 72 degrees. I'm freezing <laughs> and she's over here panting. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Um, and so she was like, you know, add some cooling foods to try to like drain that heat and lower the internal temperature. And she's, I wouldn't say a huge fan of raw food, Okay. But she does know that like home food is better as long as it's done right. Um, and so she didn't tell me like, you know, go start feeding duck and rabbit and all that stuff. But she was like, you know, add like cucumber and watermelon um, to help cool her down. And I was like, okay, not a problem. 
I, of course, then changed her whole diet. <laughs> um, but it worked. And she went to the vet on this past Tuesday. Zero sensitivity in her stomach. Her That's tongue awesome. has already started getting lighter. It's not completely pink <laughs> like we want it to be, but it is getting better. Um, and I have noticed that she's panting less just from going from warmer, even like neutral to warm foods, which was like, you know, beef, um, pork. I know some of the list out there put beef as like hot, but I think it kind of just depends on like grass fed, corn fed. Yeah. Um, but just changing it over and I don't feed all cooling foods because then she's going to get too cold. Too cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do feed like neutral foods, um, like quail. I feed a lot of quail, um, even tripe, which is then also good for like the stomach. Um, but I try to balance it out with like cooling foods and neutral foods and just kind of avoid the warm unless it's like a little treat. Mm -hmm. or I'm trying to treat something specifically. Like she has a lot of um, like stagnation in her body. Um, she actually developed a lipoma on her back. And the vet was like, yeah, like there's a lot of like dampness and phlegm and stagnation. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but I bought a bunch of like Chinese medicine books and I'm like reading it. I'm like, wow, okay. And I'm like, you know, wanting to go buy the whole store. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But like there are some warming foods that will clear stagnation and clear the phlegm like ginger and turmeric, which are hot foods. So I do give those two, but the amounts are so low mm -hmm. that I'm not noticing a negative effect. Gotcha. So just for people listening who may not know, TCM is traditional Chinese medicine, right? Okay. And then when you talk about cooling foods and or cool foods and hot foods, you're not talking about temperature. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. So not like cold from the fridge. Right. Hot the stove. right. It's just energetically, like yeah. how they make the body feel. Like you think of chicken would be warming and you think of like chicken soup on like a, a cold winter day mm -hmm. and it just it makes you feel warm inside. Um, duck, they're swimming in water all day they're they're a cold energetically animal yeah yeah I had um so when we we moved almost a year ago we moved from San Diego into central Texas and I knew that I was going to like I started ahead of time before we ever moved trying to find a vet a pet sitter all mm -hmm. the things didn't didn't necessarily work out but I got a head start and it took me a while. I finally have found a vet and she's pretty darn good. She's, she calls herself a holistic vet. I think mostly because she does acupuncture, but she also dabbles in TCM. And uh, one of my cats, she said, you know, let's start, let's, let's find some, um, I want to say it was cooling foods for her. Venison is a cooling food, right? Um, because that was one of the ones she was like, let's get her on venison. I feel like it might be neutral. Neutral? Okay. Well, <laughs> might be I like, had a really hard time. I think it might be neutral to warming. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was warming then. I'd have to look back at my notes as to like what she told me to do. Yeah. But um, she was like, let's look for... I don't, I'm thinking I could be, I could be totally wrong about this. I should have prepared better, but um, she, I think she said like rabbit venison, like let's look at, at foods like that. And I was like, okay, so maybe it was warming foods. I don't know. Um, and I had the hardest time trying to find foods for her. Like I'm not to the point where I'm, especially for my cats. Like I tried, I tried to do a deep dive. It was probably two years ago now. And I was like, in the books, like I'm going to figure out how to make cat food at home. I'm I, I like my head was like I, I cannot like I'm not a dumb person, but like I'm not Elon Musk, but I'm not dumb, right? <laughs> and I'm reading the books, and I'm reading, and I'm like taking notes, and I'm writing, you know, and I'm going through everything, and I'm like consulting with other people um, that I don't know if you know. 
Nick, Nikki Go Giovanelli. I don't know. She does canine nutrition, but she's very also interested in, in feline nutrition. And I was consulting with her and she's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out too. I'm like, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I gave up basically. Yeah. And so even like, I know I'm not ready to make cat food at home. Mm-hmm. That was actually one of the next things I was going to ask you to talk about how different it is. Um, not that you're studying feline nutrition, but I'm sure you have a bit of an understanding of how different it is from canine nutrition. And so I'm like, I've got to find commercially available. Right. And finding rabbit venison, like these things are, you're, you're going to be probably, it's going to be easier to find them for dogs. Yeah. Than cats. I looked and looked and I finally found a canned food venison and I was like, okay. And she does really well on it. Expensive as crap, but yeah. <laughs> um, she does really, really well on it. So anyway, all of that said, Tell me um, a little bit about your knowledge of how different it is, just because I do content for both dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. So I always try to like put some disclaimer in about if I'm talking about dogs, I'm talking about dogs, right? Like don't extrapolate this and think it's okay for your cats. Or if it is okay for your cats, then I'm going to say this is good for cats and dogs, right? (laughs) But everything we've talked about today is pretty much not okay. I mean, they could eat eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they are interested in a tomato, I would it'd probably be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So cats, like, I don't know, like I feel like there's so much conflicting info. Like there's some great websites out there, but then like some of the information's really, really good. And then the other information I'm like, Ugh, please don't follow that. Yeah. Um, so with Amber, my cat, um, she gets eosinophilic granulomas, which are like ulcers. If she eats a food that she's like sensitive to. And that started when she was like nine months old <laughs> and she is like, she's a completely indoor cat. So like, she's not vaccinated. Like she doesn't get flea and tick stuff. So I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like you should have a great immune system. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so with her, we originally started with, um, canned food and just trying to figure out what was triggering these ulcers because they would, they would get really bad. Like to the point, like her chin, I always say that like, she looks like Jay Leno, like, (laughs) (laughs) um, and then she would get them on her feet. And so, um, I found out that she was allergic to chicken, beef and pork. So I'm like, great. (laughs) You're (laughs) not allergic to everything expensive. I love that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I put her on a Turkey canned food for the first couple of years, just until I really got it under control. And then trying to formulate for her was so difficult because I didn't have access to like rabbit and duck and quail. And so it's like, you can't really make a balanced diet just on Turkey. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and so I would use things like, um, like Alnutrin, but even that, like, I know some people are like, they're like, Oh, you just add a tinny meat and it balances it. Yeah. You definitely got to tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is hard. I think cats are hard in general, even if they're not allergic to everything, just because they're so picky, Mm -hmm. you can make a balanced diet. Are they going to eat it? (laughs) That's the question. (laughs) Um, my mom's cat, I've been trying to get him on raw for two years and he is the pickiest cat ever. He never had kibble as a kitten. So I don't understand like why he didn't take to like the canned food to then like the ground raw food when it had a very similar texture. But like he literally, after two days of eating a specific food, he's like, I don't want it. And no amount of coaxing, like every tip and trick out there does not work for him. Like he literally will rather starve. And unlike dogs where we can do tough love, can't do that with cats. <laughs> That's super yeah. dangerous. Um, Gypsy, I'm not getting your toy right now. Come here. <laughs> She's she like, like too long. <laughs> yeah, she went through it like over the couch and she can't reach it. <laughs> come here, come here. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, cats are just difficult in the manner of balancing it with items that they'll actually eat. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I know there's like a lot of controversy with like cats that have kidney disease and you have to lower the phosphorus and lower the protein. And while the phosphorus should be lowered, the protein should not, you know, they need that protein. They're going to have muscle wasting and all kinds of stuff. And I think that's where a lot of people just kind of give up because they're like, oh, well, I heard this and I heard this. And they just feel so overwhelmed by all the conflicting information. Um, For a time being, I did feed whole prey. Um, I fed like a lot of mice and rats and quail. Um, She really liked the mice and rats, didn't really care too much for the quail with the feathers on it. Like she'll eat regular quail from the store. Um, And that was because back in the day I read a website and they literally have a weekly menu of like whole prey items. And they're like, all your cat needs. And I'm like, mm, okay, sounds good. And now I'm like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> right. You know, so now I do feed some whole prey, but like mixed with an actual balanced weekly recipe. So maybe like twice a week, she'll get like a whole prey animal. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Well, and I found it so difficult to even find like a single protein source food for a cat. Like Mm -hmm. you can find it for dogs. Yeah. You may have to look a little bit, but holy moly for cats. Hmm. I I think the only frozen one I know of that's like single protein would be vital essentials. But like, you're going to be paying like a hundred dollars a bag. Yeah. And that bag might last you two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. So that's kind of where I was. I, 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 I I pretty much gave up and not that I don't want to get back to it. I was just like, I was so overwhelmed reading the books and like making all the notes. And I'm like, all right, guys, (laughs) we're back to commercial. (laughs) This is what we're doing. Cats are definitely their own. (laughs) Like they're picky. And I feel like another thing I constantly see a lot too, is like the urinary issues with cats. And so then people are like freaking out, like, well, what do I feed? What do I feed? And not that it's not important on like what meats are included in it, but it's really about the moisture. Yeah. Because I mean, Amber's never been on kibble and she's never had a urinary issue, even on canned food. But my mom's cat, because he's been so picky, she did resort to giving him some kibble with the can and he had a blockage within like six months. So it really, I mean, I always tell people the cheapest balanced canned food is going to be better than dry food just simply because of the moisture. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've had, yeah, I've had an issue with a cat with um, blockages. It was, it was, it's a, it's a, it's a story for another time because it's a long one. (laughs) But um, Yeah, no, that's where, where I am with with cats as well. So I appreciate that. Um, just letting people know that it is a big, it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, We can't, cats aren't small dogs. We can't feed them that way. (laughs) So one more question I'll let you go because I appreciate so much your time. Um, and you've kind of like already talked a little bit about this, but going through all of the studying learning you've done with canine nutrition how how has it changed you feeding gypsy and and your cat too because it sounds like you've kind of evolved on both (laughs) yeah um I definitely am more conscious about like what I'm feeding um you know I will be the first to admit when COVID happened and there was food shortages and stuff everybody went back on processed food just because I was like, you know what, it's better that you guys are fed something versus nothing at all, because there's no meat for me to eat, (laughs) let alone you guys. Um, But it it does make me more conscious of like, you know, knowing what I'm putting into the bowl and what purpose it has. And I think that's the biggest thing, even like with treats, like treats are fun, treats are great, but it's like, 
should I spend money on like this cookie that just has a bunch of flour and nothing really healthy in it? Or should I spend a little bit extra and get them like dehydrated meat that actually has benefit for them? It's healthier. It's not inflammatory. Um, and then just not going overboard, you know, not getting so concerned with what you see on the internet and trying to add every single thing and overwhelming them. You know, moderation again is so important. Rotate. If you want to feed the 50 different fruits and vegetables that everybody says to feed, pick like six to feed for the week. Next week, get something else. Um, you know, don't feel, hey, don't feel overwhelmed, even with like supplements. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot is, you know, oh, well, they recommend this supplement and this and this. And I know I used to be like that where it gets to the point where you're looking and it's like, well, my dog's bowl is literally just powder. Like there's not even meat in here anymore. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of me adding this supplement? And so the more that I learn, I really take a step back and I ask myself, why am I adding this? And what purpose does it have? Whether it be the food ingredients or the supplements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that is really, really important because I don't think I ever went overboard with supplements. Um, but there was certainly a period of time where I was like, oh my gosh, like so-and-so's dog is doing so great with X, Y, Z. So I need to, I'm going to buy it too. And I probably did that two or three times. And then I realized like, I'm not like, I'm not feeding their dog. I'm feeding my dog. Right. And so right now we have one supplement with, and, and everything else is either, you know, raw, frozen raw or, um, fresh food. And I honestly only added that supplement because we moved to Texas. It's like, a um, the transfer factor came oh, yeah. and I wanted to make sure I was doing literally everything I possibly could to keep her immune system mm -hmm. top because yeah. we were going from a place with no mosquitoes to a place with a lot of bugs and mosquitoes. <laughs> um, and I actually did see some changes in her when I started adding it. Like if I, I feel like the average person may not have noticed it, but it was like, I never, ever had to clip her back toenails. They did, didn't grow. Oh, and wow. once I started giving her the transfer factors, her back toenails started to grow. And I'm like, okay, so her body is feeling good enough that it can put energy back into where yeah. like, that's where my mind went. And I'm like, okay. So I feel like she was doing really, really well. And I just like kind of gave her a little bit of a boost, but that's all. Um, because every time I see, even like when I read the forever dog and I'm reading about all of these wonderful things you should be adding to the bowl. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I get this sense of like, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. And then I take a minute and I'm like, I can't feed her that much. She's going to balloon. Right. If I give her everything I'm supposed to give her. And then I look at her and I'm like, she's doing great. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, that's kind of where, like the evolution of my thought process. So I feel like if I can give that to somebody else that maybe they can start feeling like I'm doing, I'm doing good. Right. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I mean, you know, depending on, I guess, like the supplement and like what you're trying to like treat, you might not see a physical outward difference. It might all be internal. So you don't really know if it's working. But a lot of times I think people are adding supplements for something external that they're seeing. And it's like, you know, if you went through a whole bottle and you did not see changes, please stop buying it. Your dog clearly does not need it. It is not working. <laughs> um, you know, and the same with food, you know, back going back to the fermented food. Yes, it's great. But if your dog is not doing well on it, don't keep giving it to them because it's such a good food. Like, listen to your dog, listen to what they're saying. You know, I, I cannot feed my male dog oysters, even though they're chock full of zinc, because the first time I tried feeding them to him, he literally peed in the food bowl. <laughs> and I have tried chopping them. I have tried blending him. He knows they are in there and I'm not going to force him to eat them. They I don't want a very distinct smell and yeah. strong smell, right? <laughs> You know, I don't want to force him to eat them. I don't want him to not enjoy mealtime. 
you know, dogs have very few like instances of just being happy and things that they enjoy. And so why would we ruin mealtime by adding something they don't want just because it's good for them? Yeah. And same thing with supplements, you know, nobody wants to just eat a bowl full of powders <laughs> and <laughs> bitter pills. Like, you know, if you do have to add a lot of supplements for whatever health issue, um, I saw the idea, I think from Rodney about making like little like smoothies. And I think that's a great idea. Give it away from the meal, let them enjoy their food yeah. and give them all of the powders and pills and whatever separately in a little protein smoothie. That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I think I had seen somebody like they'll um, take like the little, you know, fun ice cube tray things and do like bone broth and then put the powders in there and freeze it like that. Yeah. But I imagine if you have a lot of powder, it might not work. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be dust. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Destiny, thank you so much. Before I let you go, tell people like where they can find you and the kind of services you anticipate offering when you graduate, which will be very soon. <laughs> yeah. So um, on Instagram, um, my username for pet sitting is just destiny underscore pet care. Um, I offer like drop-ins, walks. I do house sitting. Um, I do have a somewhat small service radius, but the way my city is, it covers like 10 cities at the same time. <laughs> um, so that's currently the only services I'm offering um, until I graduate. And then on Facebook, I do have um, the pet sitting on Facebook too. Same thing, Destiny's Pet Care. Um, I also have a blog that I'm really bad at updating <laughs> um, on Facebook. It's called Gypsy's Adventures. Um, it started as a personal blog just to like document her life. And then it kind of shifted. Um, but I post like different, um, nutrition, food reviews, supplement reviews. Um, I do talk about cats occasionally. Um, and then once I graduate, um, I will be offering formulation services at first only for healthy adult dogs, um, just to kind of get the momentum going. And then, um, eventually going into puppies. After that, we'll go into therapeutics um, and then probably like another year or so before I'll offer cats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just because that's its whole another ball game. <laughs> I understand. Well, I've certainly, I mean, I've looked at other formulators and I've considered it in the past. And I think I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting close to being like settled enough that I think I can put some time into like doing it myself. Cause it's, yeah. that's what I always tell people. Do you have time or do you have money? Like right. what's one? <laughs> you gotta <Yeah>. give one. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, even for myself, sometimes I just feel lazy and I don't want to meal prep. I don't want to stand in the kitchen and cut things and <laughs> portion everything. And so I will, I'll just go to the pet store and I'll get a nice bag of commercial raw. And that's what everybody gets for the next couple of weeks. Cause I'm tired and I don't want to do anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, don't, I, mean, I, I think that's great. That's what I, I do rotate brands mm -hmm. uh, and proteins and my dog does great. I have one cat who will eat raw. So, but he's very, very picky and yeah. we narrowed it down to one brand and one protein that he'll eat, but <laughs> oh, I'm still, I'll give it to you. Cause yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, at least he's on it. I mean, that alone is such a huge accomplishment because so many people, they just cannot get them off of the, the dry food or the canned food. Yeah. And I've been, I've been up and down and back and forth on honestly with my cats because I've had so many cats mm -hmm. and as any one of my cats gets close to end of life, it gets difficult. Yeah. And I know myself and I get in that bargaining stage and I'm like, well, I'll give you something else to eat if that's what's going to keep you right. And yeah. I, I always wind up back to some sort of, I'll give you a kibble if you'll eat. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean that it is what it is. Like they spent most of their life eating the healthiest food I can get them to eat, but they're at the end. I'm, and then because that one is getting 
special food, all the others want it. And so I, I, I've, I've been through, like, I probably weaned my cats off of kibble three times now, <laughs> but I mean, I've just, you know, it's the reality. It's, it's life. It's reality. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, you know, even with like, you know, we're not in lockdown anymore, but we are still seeing the effects and food shortages and everything. I'll be the first to admit my closet pantry is full of canned food and dry food for the dogs. If God forbid, yeah, we go on another lockdown or there's a food shortage and I don't want them starving. And now I'm rushing out and now all the pet store shelves are empty. So, I mean, I'm definitely a big fresh food fan, but at the same time, you know, life happens, things happen and putting them back on processed food, isn't going to kill them. Yeah. I honestly, look, I'm blessed. I know I am. My husband and I have a, um, our primary business is a survival food company and we have canned meats and they are canned. So we, they're all, um, it's canned like you would can at home. So whereas like what you buy at the store, it's cooked and then it's canned, it's canned, sealed, and then slow pressure cooked. So it has a very long shelf life. So we fortunate, we're very fortunate. We have, um, I'll always have a good supply of meat in the house, even if it is already cooked, it's not seasoned. So it's, it's just plain and you know, there's no organ or bone or anything like that, but I can make do. And, Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where, you know, I always, keep that on hand because <laughs> I'm like, if we, if we need it, you know, here it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know when like March of 2020, like a week before lockdown, I remember going to the pet store and like everything was gone. Like I swear the only thing left was like kibbles and bits. And I'm like, I'm definitely not feeding my dog. <laughs> I do have some standard. <laughs> But I'm like, you know, that is like last resort. Like that's the only bag left in the whole state. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. And at least they were fed and we got through. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the most important part. This is what we got to talk about today is a luxury. And I understand that. Um, I just hope one day that it's not a luxury anymore, you know? I know where get, we get back to, because people are so shocked every time I'm like, kibble is new. Kibble is the trend. Mm-hmm. Like we, somehow we've gotten to the point where we were just like, Kib- kibble has always existed, right? Like, where do you think yeah. we get kibble from? And, and I, I, this is just my last tangent, I promise. But I'm like, do you think we like go to another planet where dogs and cats food live and we bring it back here and we put it into this bag and call it kibble. Like, where do you think it comes from? (laughs) No, I agree. And like, I've got some family members and, you know, they have some pets and their pets have health issues and they're on dry food. And, you know, they're always complaining and they're like, you know, back in my day, the animals were never sick. And I'm like, well, think about that a little bit longer. What were you feeding them? (laughs) You know, I mean, even like the over vaccinating, talking to my grandma, she couldn't remember how many vaccines a dog got back in the day. And now it's like some vets vaccinate for everything under the sun every single year. Yeah. And all of the flea and tick products. And, you know, obviously you have to do what you have to do and you have to make that decision for yourself and what you think is best. But our pets are definitely not eating like they used to and their bodies and immune systems are being attacked on a daily basis by so many other things. Yeah. That's now just considered the norm. Yeah. And they're not getting the exercise they used to either. Yeah. I know. I was just talking to a lady last night who moved, just moved to Hawaii and her cat is sick and like, she can't get rid of the diarrhea And I'm like, well, you moved to Hawaii. So they required a bunch of vaccinations, didn't they? And they were, she was like, yeah, I hated to do it, but like, I had to give them a rabies and 30 days later, another rabies. And it didn't matter that it had only been six months since they had had a rabies. And I'm like, okay, first and foremost, we need to detox. We need, I need you to contact a holistic vet, even if it's telehealth, because we need like you're 
my gut is like, you're dealing with vaccinosis, right? You are, your cat has just been inundated with all of this junk and it's, yeah. just, and it can't regulate it. It can't get, so yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I hate it, but, <laughs> um, okay. So you're going to be offering services soon. So go ahead and follow Destiny um, on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you may be, because I'm sure you will be posting about it as soon as you do. And I'm I'm excited for it because we need more people like you who are out there and putting out like offering real good, you know, formulation services and not just like, you know, what the vets are all afraid of that people are just feeding their dogs ground beef, right? Like that's not what we're doing out here. (laughs) Yeah. And something that's doable. I've seen formulators where they're like, oh, you have to feed X, Y, Z. And it's like the, then the pet owner comes back and they're like, I can't buy that anywhere. Like, where am I supposed to get alligator in Idaho? (laughs) Yeah. Right. You know, so I, that's like one of my main goals is I want it to be doable for everybody, you know, Mm-hmm. you tell me what you can buy and I will figure out how to make a recipe for you. Like, I don't want them to feel like they just wasted their time and money mm-hmm. and they just got a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper that means nothing to them now because they can't even right. do it. Right. And so my challenge for you then is when you get to the point in a couple of years where you're formulating for cats, I, what I really, really struggled with was like every recipe I was finding every like book I was reading, it is so supplement heavy. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, why can't I feed my cat real food? Yeah. Right. Like that's where I'm at. Like, I just want to feed my cat real food and not a bowl of powder. Like you were saying, like, how do I get there? That's what I really want. (laughs) I can send you a couple of my cat's recipes. There are only, I do use, um, a little bit of Alnutrin just to get the calcium levels up because yeah. sometimes feeding the actual bone can cause the constipation in cats. Um, okay. But well, other cats don't want the bone. Like they're, they yeah. really stick their nose out at the. <laughs> Mine is aggressive with bones. Oh. She will like fight the dogs. <laughs> um, but I can send you a couple, um, even like the non like whole bone items. Cause I feed a lot of ground. I think I only have like maybe two or three powders in them. It's very, that's very doable. Right. I don't, I mean, some of these things I was looking at, it was like supplement food. (laughs) One, one ingredient that's actual meat, the rest. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let me get my cat to eat this bitter piece of chicken. (laughs) Not going to (laughs) happen. Well, I'm excited for your services, for your um, formulation services, even with, you know, healthy adult dogs. I think that's, that's where a lot of, I mean, a lot of people I think seek out and find raw feeding and um, more holistic, holistic approaches at raising their pets Mm -hmm. when they have an issue. Yeah. Right. But even starting out with like, this is for a healthy adult dog. That's great because like, that's the goal (laughs) to get to that healthy adult dog. I love that. So I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you so much for, um, first of all, putting up with all of the, the tech issues I had at the beginning. Um, love to have you, have you back on, especially once you get your, your services going, we'll remind people about them. So yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Um, anything else you want to say? And we'll, we'll, um, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I know we covered a lot. Yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> give your pets some extra love from me and from destiny this week. Until next week, I'll talk to you. Talk to you later. Bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.